So it has been almost an entire year of a no buy for me. That is something I have never done before and I will be reflecting more on this later this month during Vlogmas. But today I actually wanna talk about my favorites for 2023. Some of these are things I got this year. Some of these are things that I rediscovered from my stuff because of the no buy. And I just thought that that could be a lot of fun. This yearly favorites looks a little bit different than most of my years, purely because of all of the life changes I've gone through this year, mostly having to do with starting home hemodialysis back in January. Speaking of dialysis, my first favorite thing this year is my dialysis room. I sat there thinking, what do I wanna pick? Do I wanna pick my recliner? Do I wanna pick the uh, splat mat that has protected my carpet? Do I wanna pick the side table? Do I wanna pick my heated blanket or the other blankets? Do I wanna pick any of the amazing things that a bunch of you got for me when I posted my wish list for my dialysis room? And then I realized, no, it's the whole fucking thing. It's all the stuff, it's the view, it's everything. I will leave link down below a tour of my dialysis room once we started using it. But in general, like I, I don't know how to express how lucky I feel to have such a good room to do dialysis in. It is like it was built for that. It has water access because it used to be an art studio. It has a beautiful view. It has space for Jesse to have his own standing desk so that he can work while he's administering dialysis to me. We can store a lot of our shit and have it not look too obtrusive. It's adjacent to our bedroom, but it doesn't look heinous. It doesn't make us feel like we live in a hospital. It's just, it's so good. It's so good and I am so proud of what we have done to make that room cozy. And I'm so grateful to all the help that we got along the way in making it there. It's just amazing. And it is literally one of my favorite things for this year. I may not like doing dialysis. If I'm gonna have to do it, I like doing it there. Number two is another thing that came up. It's something I've already had. I had this way before I started dialysis, but it came up as a huge favorite for a different reason than usual because of dialysis. And that is my iPad Pro with its magic keyboard. Now I've had this, I use it for work. I almost exclusively used it for work. And then starting dialysis, not only did I use it for like watching TV or doing some work on it, but I also used it for playing games. So I just moved locations because there's a lot of noise in my house right now. And then I just rambled for the last 15 minutes about my favorites and I hadn't hit record. So let's move on. The iPad, the magic keyboard holds it at a perfect angle, a perfect angle for poking games, Plants vs. Zombies, and for watching TV and for doing any work I need to do. But I can also remove it if I wanna do any, try and do any work like lettering work while I'm on dialysis. The iPad has always been a very important piece of my professional equipment. This is the year that it has also become a very important piece of just my life equipment. So good job, iPad. The next thing is something that I thought was mildly ridiculous. I didn't really think it was necessary. And then it started getting hella fucking cold here for the winter. We got snow on Halloween. Day before Halloween, day after Halloween. Somewhere around there. End of October, we got snow. It's a dialysis jacket. Now, if you have ever done something like dialysis or maybe you have cancer, have had cancer and you have chemo, anything else, we have to have a port for a while. You probably get really goddamn cold. Now, I have usually been okay with a blanket, but it has gotten a lot colder, especially since with like the access, you can't cover it. You can't wear long sleeves. You have to have it exposed. It's not safe to cover it up. This jacket, is like a zip up exercise jacket that's kind of loose, but it has zippers with zippers on either end that go up your arms. They make other ones for like chest ports and things like that. So what I do now is I wear it, I have it unzipped to show where my port is, but the rest of it's zipped up. And then on the other side, we unzip it to put my blood pressure cuff on and then re-zip it back up. And it keeps me warm and I appreciate that. It's not cute. I don't wear it anywhere else. And I don't like the feel of the zippers on my arms when I'm not doing dialysis because they're like annoying. It's weird to have a zipper going up your arm. It doesn't feel right. But for dialysis, I watched a lot of shows this year. <laughs> a lot of shows this year, mostly on dialysis. I was trying to find shows that were like kind of spooky, maybe a little fun, maybe a little grisly, but not too like stressful in a drama kind of way. I'm fine with things being stressful in a thriller way. I tried to watch Breaking Bad. It was just too intense for dialysis. I might go back to it, but I watched a bunch. I watched Rome, The Righteous Gemstones. And then on top of that, we watched all of the shows that we wanted to watch when they were airing, like the whole family, like House of the Dragon, The Wheel of Time, things like that. All awesome. I also watched a ton of shows from the Flanniverse this year, including The House of Usher, all great. But my number one show 
number one. And if you know me, you know where this is going because I am a 90s girl, I was class of 97, and so I am right there with the class of 96 yellow jackets. <laughs> it's like Lord of the Rings meets the rugby players who got stranded in the Andes meets the only show I've ever seen that shows like mid 40s women like mid 40s women as opposed to like sexy district attorneys or driving Miss Daisy as they might say on uh, the first wives club. It's just, it's so good. The teenager cast is so good. The 43 year old cast, I'm just going to say 43 because I'm a 43 year old lady. That cast is so good. It's both funny and it's a drama and it's a thriller and it's a mystery and it's a comedy and it's a horror show and it has the most amazing music. One of the most like creepy parts in this most recent season was set to the cranberry zombie. Fuck yeah. So yeah, if you are in my age range, fucking check it out, man, if you haven't already, because you will not be sorry. Unless you have a weak stomach, then you might be sorry. <sighs> I feel like such an old lady. My fate, one of my favorites this year is my pill minder. <laughs> I've had so many pill minders in my life ever since I got diagnosed with kidney disease and started taking blood pressure meds. But this pill minder this year has just been awesome. It has a morning and a nighttime slot because I only take meds twice a day right now. It's one round kind of tube, but it has individual pieces that come out and they're round and they're cute like rainbow colors. They have a sun for the morning and a, and a moon for the evening, and there's a lot of space. My morning pills, not big of a deal. I've only got two that I take in the mornings currently. But my evening pills, it's like an entire fucking handful of granola. So I need a lot of room. A lot of pill finders just don't have enough space for all those fucking pills. This one does. Other thing it doesn't have is those like arthritis things, the arthritis tabs, which I appreciate for people who have arthritis, but I don't, so I don't need the extra bulk. It's just very sleek, but yet has enough room for everything I need and I fucking appreciate that. Of all of my planner supplies this year, the ones that I have used the most without fail, like my, the story of my planner year in color is the neutral mild liners and the mild smoky dot pens. They go together like peas and carrots, which I still think is gross, but whatever, it makes sense if you're Forrest Gump. They are soft and beautiful. They're exactly what both lines needed when it came to like more muted colors. Oh, so pretty. I love especially the copper and the olive mild liners and the, I think it's the light rose, dusty rose, whatever that color is, the pink one from the dot pens. They're all beautiful. The one caveat for this is that the cream color in the mild liners is really hard to see, but overall they are just utterly gorgeous. I have used them so much and I anticipate I'm going to use the crap out of them next year. <laughs> I have a important question. Do you like my hair? How cute is my hair? Because I think it's really fucking cute right now. And it's cute because I have that Revlon one step, what is it called? The one step, I'm gonna look at my notes. The one step dryer brush. The one that's like a dry, it's like a, a blow dryer, but it's a brush and it's got like a round and you can like dry and smooth your hair at the same time, but still give it that like flip in the body. Oh shit. I saw a bunch of people with that Dyson thing, whatever, the Dyson air wrap or whatever, and it comes with like a million attachment, it's so fancy like travel case. That thing is like $600. No. My birthday last year, I got a 30 something dollar Di uh, Air Revlon brush, and God damn it, my sister had to teach me how to use it because I had no idea what I was doing because I have never in my life regularly blow dried my hair because it takes too long. And even when I flat iron it, it doesn't have like the shape to it. So my sister taught me what to do, and now I blow dry my hair like once or twice a week. Holy shit, who even am I? I'm, all, I'm, 43 year, I'm a 43 year old lady and I finally learned how to blow dry my hair thanks to this Revlon thing. So rock and roll Revlon thing. Another thing beauty wise that I have loved this year is my Rare Beauty setting powder. It's like the always an optimist soft setting powder for the gods or some fucking long ass ridiculous name. It's the Rare Beauty setting powder. It has a cool little container and everything else but the reason I love it is because it is radiant while still not being, it still sets your oils and like keeps them from getting too grody because I am a fucking Crisco face, but I also have weird dry patches from living in the Denver Metro and being in kidney failure. None of that really matters though, because what I really want is to not look super matte. That used to be my goal when it came to makeup, but when I started getting really sick, 
I learned that I want to wear makeup not to make me look super cute and not oily, but to make me look not like a corpse. And the more matte I look, the more corpse-like I look. The sicker I get, the more corpse-like I look. So to counter that, I'm heading in the glowy direction, and this Rare Beauty setting powder manages to make me look softly glowy without making me look like a fucking freshly sprayed with cooking spray muffin tin, if you know what I'm saying. It doesn't break me out, and I love it. I had some at the start of the year. I used it up. I used something else that I happened to have. I think it was the Laura Mercier powder because I had a little birthday gift from Sephora when I was going through all of my shit for my no-buy. When I ran out of all of my setting powders, I went right back to the Rare Beauty, and that's where I'm going to stay until maybe I get a transplant and I need different makeup again, which happened to my sister. Fucking hilarious when she walked out in the sun right after getting her transplant, and you saw the line of demarcation from her makeup, and you're like, honey, your face... Your like skin tone is entirely different now, <laughs> now that you're not in kidney failure. This next one is another thing that I've had, I had prior to this year, is a purse, and it is amazing. It is my Madewell crossbody bag. I believe it's medium. It's expensive, well not super expensive. I've had, I've not, maybe not had, so it's, it's in the $100 something, $150 range, but I bought it because I needed a bag that was not too big, because I am one of those people who is in the club of however big my bag is, I will fill it with shit. I will fill it with planners and markers and wallets and sunglasses and lip glosses, so many lip glosses and lotions and hand sanitizers and receipts enough receipts to build an entire castle out of. And if it's small, I'll fill up the small bag. But I needed something that had enough room for all of my things that I need, my wallet, my sunglasses, my keys, my millions of receipts, without being so big that it's like a satchel. On top of that, I can't carry a purse on my left shoulder because of my fistula. That's a no-no. It's bad news for your fistula. But carrying a purse on my right shoulder is hard too because I have some nerve damage in there from uh, bending over a sign table at Trader Joe's for 12 years. Carrying a bag, like a handbag, is bad news for Cindy because with my kidney brain fog, I will and have left it places. So having a crossbody where I can wear it on my right shoulder but it balances the weight a little bit to keep the nerve damage from sucking is exactly what I need. And this Madewell bag is just the perfect size to hold just what I need and not more than a million receipts. <laughs> And also it's leather and the like the patina, 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 I don't know how you say it. It's gotten prettier over time. So I love it. I'm going to keep wearing it. I might get a smaller wallet though. My wallet has, my girthy ass wallet that I've got that's like yay big is starting to feel a little big. I have a smaller one, but I need one that's like medium size. Medium. Medium is the, is the word of the day for my purse lifestyle. I thought I was done talking about dialysis shit. I'm not. But this is more having to do with being itchy. So one thing I have discovered <laughs> since starting dialysis is that I am sensitive to fucking everything. I am sensitive to the adhesive in the, the medical tape. I am sensitive to the adhesive in the bandages that I wear post dialysis. I am sensitive to the saline that they use to get me started on dialysis. I am sensitive to the lidocaine cream that I have to wear so that my arm doesn't hurt when I cannulate myself. I am sensitive to the Tegaderm that I wear to hold the lidocaine cream on for the half hour I have to. Everything makes, it doesn't matter. I've tried different things. I am fucking sensitive, which makes me fucking itchy. Like my arm is so fucking itchy 99% of the time, whether it's rashy or it's dry or it's irritated or whatever. As soon as it heals from one thing, another thing starts and I'm just constantly miserable. And so I named this category my itchy buddies because they are the things that have been helping me survive this. First of all is my Cetaphil moisturizing cream that comes in the tub. This was recommended to me by my nephrologist who actually learned about it from her dermatologist because she has, I think, eczema. Because it's thicker and doesn't have as much alcohol in it because it's in the tub, it really helps. So every night after I shower when my poor little arm is dry and itchy, but my scabs are there so I don't have to worry about like, you know, getting any... I have buttonholes from, it's a whole thing. Point being is that I gotta be careful with any cream I put on my arm when it's freshly opened, but once it's scabbed over, I can be a little more generous. I'll slather some on all over my arm. I really want to right now. And then rub whatever is left into my hands. And it is magnificent for just calming down the dryness and helping things stay a little bit more supple, supple. When the rash gets bad, I have tried every hydrocortisone cream you can possibly think of. 
The one that I like the best is the Aveeno hydrocortisone cream because it has the colloidal oatmeal in it. I find that to be the most soothing. The aloe ones, not so much. Also, it absorbs faster because sometimes I need to like get it rubbed in and then move on with my life. So the Aveeno hydrocortisone cream with a little purple cap and it's got colloidal oatmeal in it, that's the most soothing hydrocortisone cream I have used. And then finally, I have, this is not something you can go buy. It's a, a prescription antihistamine that I've been given. I already take Claritin, but this one is to help with the itching when I am on dialysis. So go you nephrology team. Thanks for prescribing it. <laughs> you knew that I had to mention this as a favorite for the year because it might have been more than a year now since it was announced, but fuck if I am not still smug about my beautiful Moxie Love cover from last year's planner lineup. I just love it. It's so pretty. I feel like I should display it forever even when I'm done with this planner and it's a chonky boy. This is a chonky boy. The flip through is coming soon. This, is, this boy is full, but goddamn, dude, if I do not just love it smug. I, you know what? That's the thing. Like favorites for me, if it makes me smug, it's going to be a favorite because I love feeling smug. It's one of my favorite feelings is being smug. It's like that episode of South Park and the George Clooney Academy Award speech. I'm sorry. I'll go on. Planner wise, I also want to mention my HB90 setup in Notion. I did that earlier this year. I want to say quarter two, maybe question mark. It was when I realized ClickUp wasn't working for me when I was working on the aforementioned iPad. It just wasn't I wanted to be able to get work done, especially administrative work on dialysis, and ClickUp was not conducive to working on my iPad on the Magic Keyboard the way I wanted to. So I swapped to Notion. It took some time to get everything fixed up, but it has been going great, and the more I use it, the better it gets. The more extensive it gets, the more like dialed in it gets. I think since starting the HB90 system, which I have now been using for at least a couple of years now, since starting to use the system, I don't think I have stuck with a planner system in terms of how I utilize the HB90 system for more than maybe two quarters at the most. I don't think, like I've always had to tweak it and make changes because it wasn't quite working. Notion is the first time that I am feeling completely settled with no FOMO about moving to something else. I just, this is what I want and I know this is what I want. So I love it. If you haven't, I think I've mentioned it already, but if you haven't seen the tutorial I did with my patrons that I made a video of for everybody on how to set up your HB90 Notion, it's not super aesthetic. It's mostly focused on function. Check it out. I'll leave it linked in the description. Now that I've talked about all the things that I loved this year, I think there's a couple of other things I do need to shout out. First and foremost, major favorite for the year is my dialysis team. I cannot stress to you enough, if you have chronic illness, then you know as well as I do that your care team can make or break your living experience because you rely on them to help you and you rely on them to guide you through things, but you also need them to listen to you and to understand the things that you're telling them and to be responsive and to not dismiss you. That is something that can be really hard to come by when you are chronically ill. If you are fat, that makes it even harder. I'm not fat. I'm not skinny. I am most definitely in the higher realms of the, the weight category when you look at BMI, which is a bullshit measurement, but we won't worry about that. But I do have family members who are fat and family members who are chronically ill. And I know exactly what they have gone through because they have told me about it. And it fucking sucks balls. And that's something I want to talk about in the new year at some point because it really bothers me. But returning to that though, if you are somebody who is chronically ill, then you know how important it is to have a care team that you can trust and that you know has your best interests at heart and that you know is not going to be so set in their ways that they don't listen to you. My dialysis team is that team. I cannot be happier with the team that we have for our home hemodialysis team. I'm fucking English, right? It includes my nephrologist and my other nephrologist because they're professors. I go to a university healthcare. So they also bring in, you know, people that are learning to be nephrologists and learning to be dialysis nephrologists. And so it's really helpful to have a lot of different opinions, but also have them be very thorough. My nurses, I had our one nurse who was amazing and he just went to a different clinic. And now I have another nurse who is also amazing. My social worker, my dietitian, they're all 
fucking rad. They're not only rad for us in terms of training us, but in terms of every month seeing them and their responsiveness. On top of that, the people that we work with in terms of getting our supplies here are great. On top of that, the clinic at the hospital is awesome. If we have to go in for respite care to give Jesse a break or if he needs to travel, I am just absolutely happy with my nephrology team and also with my transplant team, like my transplant people. I don't have a transplant yet, but the care team at the transplant center is also great, but it's the nephrology team that I see on a regular basis. And I, I could not be happier with them on top of that. And most importantly, and this sounds silly, but I have gained such a massive appreciation for my husband this year. Jesse is my care partner. I had to learn how to be a dialysis patient and a bunch of things about dialysis. He had to learn how to give it to me. <laughs> He didn't have to learn how to give that to me, but he did have to learn how to administer dialysis to me. And he does it five days a week and working full time. He's the one who maintains our health insurance. He's the primary breadwinner because I can't work as much as I used to. And he has been juggling so much this year and he has survived <laughs> and I'm very grateful. I'm also grateful to my kids for learning about it and everything, but Really, it's my dialysis care team, which Jesse is the, uh, the point person on. So, big favorite. And then finally, all of you, my patrons, people who watch my videos, the people who follow me on Instagram, the people who find me out on the street, my community. It, this year has been really hard. And the year before was really hard when I was in kidney failure. And I uh, don't know what I would have done. If A, I didn't be, I wasn't able to do this job of making art and making videos and everything else that is flexible enough to get me through dialysis each week, that is flexible enough, you know, to be there when I'm able to address it. For those of you in my Patreon community who have put up with my flakiness this past year because of having to learn how to juggle dialysis in life, and even this week as I'm filming this, you had to deal with my flakiness because I lost a fucking filling. Like, I am so utterly grateful and you are some of my favorites in the entire world because you're the awesomest because you're here. You're awesome. You're awesome in this awesome space and I appreciate you. That's enough of that. I'm going to cry. Okay. Let me know in the comments below. What is something you loved this past year? Especially, I'd love to hear specifically, is there something you got in this last year? And then something that you already had that you discovered just how much you loved it this year, like the rare beauty powder. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, friends, peace.